You have hundreds of skeletal muscles within your body that you can consciously move. They're called skeletal because, well, they attach to your skeleton. But what is a muscle made of? If we were to take a look at the muscle, we would see that it is connected to bone via tendons. However, it isn't until we take a closer look at the muscle and keep zooming in that things become a little more intricate. It doesn't help that the words we use to describe parts of the muscle are mostly Greek, making it somewhat confusing at first glance. So hopefully this video unclutters some of that confusion and puts things simply. You can split the skeletal muscle into five parts, starting with the largest structure, the whole muscle, down to its most basic unit, the sarcomere. If we were to view this on a scale, the whole muscle would be considered a macro or large scale structure, and we would work our way down to the microstructures, which are extremely small, much smaller than the head of a pin. So, let's begin on the macro level and work our way down these five levels. The whole muscle is essentially just that, a single muscle unit. This muscle has been sliced neatly in half so that we can see what's inside of it. The muscle is covered in an elastic sheath of connected tissue called the epimesium. This has two basic functions, to hold everything in place and also to prevent friction between other muscles and bones. Epimesium can be split into two Greek words that make sense of what it is, epi and mise. Epi means on, upon or above, and mise means muscle. So when we put the two words together, epimesium simply means on, upon or above the muscle. Now, the muscle isn't hollow inside, it actually contains smaller units which we call fascicles. These can also be called fasciculi. If we were to extend one fascicle out from the muscle, it would look like this. The word fascicle also has a meaning behind it. It simply means a bundle of structures. What separates each of the different fascicles and keeps them from moving about is called the perimesium and is another connective tissue within the muscle. If we take a little closer look at the muscle, we can see that the fascicles do indeed contain bundles of structures. These are called muscle fibres, and a single fascicle can contain anywhere from 10 to over 100 muscle fibres. However, a lot of confusion surrounds muscle fibres because they actually have three different names that mean the same thing. They can also be called muscle cells or myocytes. If we take a closer look at the fascicle, and take out one individual muscle fibre, the connective tissue in between the muscle fibres, much like the perimesium, is called the endomesium. Endo meaning within, and mise meaning muscle. If we take a closer look at the muscle fibre, it also contains structures called the myofibrils. A single muscle fibre can contain anywhere from hundreds to thousands of myofibrils. A sarcolemma, or myolemma, covers each of the muscle fibres. Sarco meaning flesh and lemma meaning sheath. So a fleshy sheath covers the muscle fibres. If we were to extend out one myofibril, we would see the sarcomeres within. Here we have the myofibril, and as you can see, its characteristics are a little bit different than the other structures we've seen today. There are light and dark bands. These are called sarcomeres, and here is one sarcomere. The myofibril also has another layer on top of it. We have the sarcoplasmic reticulum, which are the thin horizontal tubes. These are primarily responsible for storing, releasing and absorbing calcium ions, which are fundamental to the muscle contraction. The blue tubes that run vertically are called the transverse tubules or the T-tubules. These are fundamental for the nerve transmission to the muscle fibre. The transverse tubules are also connected to the myofibril's sarcoplasm, 
which is essentially a muscle's cytoplasm. To either side of the transverse tubules are the terminal cisternae. These are enlarged parts of the sarcoplasmic reticulum. If we were to take the network of tubes off the myofibril, we would see the sarcomeres underneath. These are the fundamental units of the skeletal muscle and where the muscle contraction occurs. However, this picture does not depict everything inside the sarcomere as this will be explained next video, where we'll be looking at the mechanisms behind the muscle contraction and how everything comes into place. For now, you've understood the structure of the muscle for everything to take place, so it should be a doddle learning this.